Many people know that surgical training started here at the Johns Hopkins Hospital in 1889. When the hospital opened, Dr. William Stewart Halstead was named the first chief of surgery. So anyone who has trained in surgery in the United States, really since 1889, can trace their roots back here to the Johns Hopkins Hospital. Welcome. Thank you for considering applying to Johns Hopkins General Surgery Residency Program. I'm Pam Lipset. I'm the Program Director, and I'm really happy that you considered applying to our program. It's really a terrific program. It's not for every person, but it is for those who want to be leaders in general surgery. The culture here is one of uh, academic distinction and excellence. Most of our residents are going to go on to be chairs in the future. Coming here to train in surgery is not just coming here to learn to do operations, but it's really coming here to learn to think about the patient and the field and the questions that we encounter in the field at a much higher, more sophisticated level. First and foremost, we want to produce good doctors who are outstanding technical surgeons. One of them is not enough. You have to be both. Trainees need to learn in an environment that is both exciting and fast moving, but also comfortable. So we want to provide an environment in which they're well prepared to succeed. The reason that people come to a place like Johns Hopkins is for the training, if you're a resident. If you're a patient, you come here to see a doctor. You don't come for a center. You come because you know there's someone who's really good here at managing your disease, your condition to get you better. I went to medical school in the United Kingdom at Cambridge University and I chose after some time in the UK to come to the United States to train at Johns Hopkins uh, because it purely is a fantastic academic and uh, clinical experience. Uh, yeah, I've been here a long time, both as a student and a resident and now on faculty, and I think one of the nice things about being here so long is you kind of get the perspective of where people are at different stages in their training. Um, and so I work mostly with interns and second years in the OR on my service. So it's really nice seeing someone at the very beginning of their training in terms of, you know, just learning how to suture, just learning how to use the bovi, you know, kind of very early steps in, in, uh, in operating, and then to work with them again as a second year and see how much they've progressed during that time. I think the multiple sites that the residents rotate at give them kind of the breadth of a surgery experience. At Bayview, you know, you can have a different flavor, a different patient population. At Howard County, you have a more community practice setting. Um, and I think it's important for them to see that and understand how surgery works across the spectrum, not just in one big academic center. The roots are set early on and um, what I'm most proud of, I hope I'm a good surgeon, but what I'm most proud of is to see our chiefs finish here because I think they're almost always fantastic surgeons that we're very proud to have trained and wherever they go people sing their praises and you know no surprise they end up being leaders of surgery in the country. I think broader the whole faculty sort of positions itself around the residency centrally. The whole thing sort of runs through the residents and most faculty members consider it a core part of their identity being a part of the residency program. I think one of the great things about our program is that there's 
not really an exact perfect match. Our program takes a lot of different people um, for who they are and helps them get to their goals. There is no typical Johns Hopkins surgery resident. In fact, I intentionally look for people who are atypical. I want uniqueness and specialness and individual excellence, but I want people who are going to work together as a team. I think that trying to figure out whether or not you're a good match for a place is really hard, especially when you don't know all of the people. And one of the things that makes Hopkins unique is everyone is very accomplished and driven, but very humble about it everything that they've done. Baltimore um, is the perfect size city to train in for residency. It is large enough that anything that you would ever dream about doing or want to do is here and available, but it's not so large that those things become cumbersome or hard to do. So it makes for a really easy city to live in, a very affordable city to live in, and a great place to kind of lay back and relax um, on those days that you do have off when you want to enjoy yourself. We strive always to be the best, um, understanding that diversity and having different points of view, not all wanting to do exactly the same thing or coming from the same place is really important. Diversity is not only diversity of thought, but also of color, of orientation, of perspective, and hopefully allowing them to have uh, an inclusive environment where they're nurtured and supported. Coming to Hopkins, I've never felt like I was an other. I've never felt that I was different than, and I never felt that I felt far from the Halston tree. So even though I might look different, I might be shorter than your average bear, I might speak an additional language than most people, I honestly have never felt uh, non holsty I think Hopkins is a high octane environment. I mean, it's, uh, you've got a lot of really smart, motivated people. The clinical care we provide here is very top-notch. There's an expectation of excellence, bringing the best to the job every day. Our residents are hardworking, committed, passionate, resilient, really, really smart. Hopkins is a very special place. Um, for the residents, but because of the residents. It's always been that way, it always will be. I think what's essential is you have to have the internal drive to be the best you can be and want to be that person. You need to want to be a leader, a discoverer. You need to be inquisitive, but you have to be a great teammate. You know, certainly everyone wants to come here to be an excellent technical and clinical surgeon. But I think the other thing that draws people to Johns Hopkins is the academics. The institutional resources here are unparalleled. Our research time is totally protected in that we don't have any clinical responsibilities. One of the benefits of this program is this is a program that will allow you to spend dedicated time, one to four years, pursuing whatever academic task, degree, research that you want. And so if you want to be somebody who, you know, goes to the White House to do a fellowship, you can do that. If you want to do a PhD down the street, you can do that. If you want to do a master's degree in artificial intelligence or engineering, you can do that here. To me, this place is unique because it's a place where you can come with an idea and people will get behind you in that, in, in, in that idea. The lab years are really special years as part of the residency. And it really develops for people the foundation that they can then use later to truly become uh, clinician scientists. Before even pursuing medical school, was able to work with a transplant surgeon here to pass a congressional bill to allow for the transplantation of organs from HIV positive donors to HIV positive recipients. And now training as a resident here and being able to take care of patients who are recipients of these organs is truly a special thing. When I was on the interview trail, I, I went across the country and I met a lot of you know people I really looked up to in surgery, and a lot, I noticed that a lot of them had a relationship to Johns Hopkins. And you know these are leaders, program directors, chairs, and I decided, you know, I want to train where these people train, where you know surgical residency training started. You're surrounded by people who have connections here, throughout the region, throughout the country, and throughout the world, and they introduce you to other influential people. 
I think there's something about um, walking through hallways full of history that makes Hopkins a special place to train. I think this is a, an incredibly historic place and it's great to match both that history with the modern and incredible training that we get here. You know, every place has great faculty, great patients. We have great buildings. I don't think anyone has the history that Hopkins has, but we don't stay on that history. You know, I've been here nearly 40 years and it's so different now, but what isn't at all different? The history of excellence, the expectation of being the best. Uh, that's what it was 40 years ago, and that is what it is still today. I think the changes that happen um, with hospital leadership, with the medical school leadership, are always kind of big question marks. But um, someone said to me once, Hopkins is like a battleship. It doesn't turn very quickly, but it's hard to sink. Congratulations on selecting a career in surgery, and thank you for your interest in the Johns Hopkins Department of Surgery. We're blessed and honored to have a fantastic group of faculty and residents who really define our specialty in very special ways. I hope that you enjoy your interview and your visit, virtual as it may be, and we look forward to your uh, application in the future.